morning, Erie. It's Tuesday morning. I'm Jocelyn Person filling in for David Belmondo. I'm meteorologist Tom DeVecchio. Dodged a few raindrops yesterday and oh, uh, yes. uh, maybe a little bit today. Yeah, it wasn't too severe. No. Good stuff. I dealt with it. Good stuff. I'll <laughs> tell you what. In April, we've had a lot worse. So oh, I let's bet. Let's enjoy it. <laughs> That's true. You're right. <laughs> well, the Centers for Disease Control has updated guidance when it comes to cleaning and disinfecting surfaces to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The organization saying eradication of airborne transmission is more important. Jill McCormick reports. A year ago, it was near impossible to find a container of Clorox wipes or even bleach for that matter. People stocking up and wiping down everything in their path to stop the spread of COVID-19. Fast forward one year and now the CDC says soap and water does the trick. In most situations, regular cleaning of surfaces with soap and detergent, not necessarily disinfecting those surfaces, is enough to reduce the risk of COVID-19 spread. The change not likely to have much of an impact on local businesses. We are advocates of taking massive precaution. So we always use cleaning supplies and you know cleaning uh, that have been absolutely proven to, to knock out everything. Mm -hmm. Because you know, we can't forget that there are other things that live on surfaces maybe much longer mm -hmm. than, than this particular uh, you know, virus. And we have to consider those things as well. The new guidelines won't change things too much here at Brewery because they say they've been following strict cleaning guidelines even before the pandemic began. We've always been trying to be careful and, you know, we're in business to be safe and responsible. So um, the same steps we're doing pre-COVID, we, we do during COVID. As things slowly start to change, some things will never change. That is their commitment to the safety of customers. We, we go to get certified to, to, to make sure we're doing the right things and have the right protocol. Um, so that's something we took seriously long before a pandemic. We'll, we'll continue to do that moving forward. I think that this entire experience has really raised the bar for how most companies, uh, regardless whether it's gym or you know any other stores, how they sanitize and, and how we will continue to uh, sanitize and clean any facility for years to come. And I don't think it's ever going to go back. I think everyone are, is there always going to kind of be at a higher level now. Jill McCormick, Jet 24 Action News. Using a stronger product for disinfection is only recommended in indoor settings, schools and homes where there has been a suspected or confirmed case of COVID-19 within the last 24 hours. For a look at the new report issued by the CDC, just head over to our website, yourerie.com. Let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers for our area. The Erie County Department of Health reporting 24 new positive cases in Erie County Monday, Crawford County reporting five new cases, Warren County up 15, Chautauqua County reporting and a three day total, total of 119 new cases, Ashibula County is up 32, Pennsylvania reporting 2,718 new cases yesterday as well as five additional deaths. And COVID-19 vaccination efforts continue with Saturday seeing a record 4 million doses administered nationwide. Meanwhile, Pennsylvania is now expanding COVID-19 vaccine eligibility to those in phase 1B. The category includes grocery store workers, food workers, U.S. Postal Service workers, and many more. Several vaccine clinic directors we spoke with say this expansion is exciting and local hospitals feel more prepared since vaccine distribution has been consistent for the last couple of weeks. Approximately uh, 2,300 first dose vaccines each week from the Department of Health. So we don't anticipate a change to that. As long as we're continuing to vaccinate, I think that we're going to see a consistent flow of vaccine. Things are really starting to come together. Meanwhile, in Erie County, 129,079 vaccinations have been administered. In Crawford County, the number is 41,717. And in Warren County, 14,123 shots have been given. Across Pennsylvania, more than 5.7 million people have been vaccinated. If you need information on where and how to sign up for a COVID vaccination, it's as easy as logging on to our website which is yourerie.com.
The man accused of shooting five people in and outside of Bogie's Tavern is now facing additional charges and several other shootings. Police allege that the gun Danny Nicholson, the second used in the Bogie's shooting, was the same gun used in over 50 shots fired incidents. Police reporting Nicholson faces charges of carrying an unlicensed firearm, five counts of discharging a weapon into an occupied structure, 10 counts of reckless endangerment, and other charges. After continuing to search for a missing Mill Creek man, rescue crews have decided to discontinue discontinuing using sonar. It's continuing coverage this morning. According to rescue chief, the decision was made after searching for hours overnight Sunday for Rabin Sobeti, whose vehicle was found near Lamp E Marina days ago. Sobeti, who has been missing since March, dis disappeared after he was reportedly on his way to his girlfriend's house in Ohio. Meanwhile, the autopsy of a body found in the Allegheny River Friday shows it to be indeed a man missing in the Warren area since February. John Christopher Nelson is one of two people missing in Warren. Police do not believe the cases are related, but recently searched for both. The cause of death, death is being listed as drowning and no foul play is suspected. A fire leaves one home damaged in Warren County. The fire happening just after 5.30 last night in the 100 block of Cottage Avenue. According to reports from the scene, the fire is believed to have started in the back of the home. No one was home when the fire broke out and no injuries were reported. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. A Mill Creek family is looking to start over after a fire rips through their mobile home. Firefighters were called to 4065 West Ridge Road to a home in the trailer park. Smoke was already pouring from the end of the trailer and firefighters had to use hundreds of feet of hose to get a water source. We had a heavy fire showing out of the back end of the mobile home, at, which started in the middle bedroom and worked its way to the east. And uh, the guys made a quick knockdown on it. There, it. There's very extensive damage, though. It's a total loss. The homeowner and two children were home at the time. Everyone got out safely. Lake City volunteers had a busy afternoon Monday battling a stubborn brush fire in the West County. The fire started shortly after 1 p.m. Monday. Thanks to the winds, the fire burned several acres along West Lake Road near Godfrey Road in Gerard Township. Firefighters were able to contain the flames before any of the nearby homes were at rest. City residents had two chances to learn about how the city plans to spend millions in federal funding. There were two virtual virtual meetings held Monday. The nearly $3 million are from a block grant issued by the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development. Mayor Joe Schimber saying the city's Erie Department of Economic Development is working to help disperse the money. They really focus on using that money the way it's intended and to help the people that need it most. And all of our community centers are getting money. There's a lot of projects. I know we always try to fund projects that are going to have a lasting effect. Over $11 million might be awarded to the EMTA from the federal government. The Erie Metropolitan Transit Authority might be receiving $11.6 million to help with low numbers due to the pandemic. The CEO of EMTA says the funds will be used for operational needs and will no not be used for any capital improvements. It's going to help pay uh, our payroll, number one. Uh, help control operating costs, or PPE, uh, equipment and cleaning supplies, revenue losses, uh, rising fuel costs, uh, assist with paratransit or lift uh, services. Even though the announcement of receiving the money is not yet official, it is likely to happen soon, according to the CEO.
Time now is 5.10. Coming up on Good Morning Erie, we'll check in with the Olympic torch parade as it slowly makes its way around Japan ahead of the Olympic Games this summer. From your news lead, you're watching David Belmondo, meteorologist Tom DeVecchio, and Jane Pushkar with sports. This is Jet 24, Good Morning Erie. 